Researchers at Apple have just released a new paper that really challenges the idea that large language models like ChatGPT are actually doing mathematical reasoning. Generative AI is definitely getting much better at math. I, I did a video myself a couple months ago about how ChatGPT was getting over 80% on my second year university level math exams. However, the question is, is it actually doing mathematical reasoning? And how fragile are its mathematical abilities as you start to tweak the underlying problems? The way AI researchers commonly measure mathematical ability is through this large database of 8,000 grade school math level math problems called GSM 8K for short. This database consists of lots of relatively simple word problems that you have to read a paragraph and do some arithmetic to be able to get to the final result. And all of the major LLMs do pretty darn well at this data set. For example, ChatGPT 4.0 is getting 95% on this problem set of grade school math problems. However, because this database is so popular, there's always a risk of data contamination, which is that as large language models are sweeping up the internet to try to get new sources of information, they're actually inputting the same problems that they're going to be tested on. And so they get really good at solving those specific problems, but maybe not as you start to tweak them. So what the Apple researchers did was that they tweaked this data bank of math problems in three major ways, sort of getting increasingly interesting and, and harder as they went along. The first tweak is hopefully very minor. All it does is change the names and the numbers involved. So for example, this is a problem that's about a hotel phone and there's various numbers that charge different amounts depending on how you're using the phone. And if I swap it from a hotel phone to a phone booth and I take all of the numbers and slightly tweak them, that shouldn't change the difficulty of the problem at all. Like it's the same problem, just slightly tweaked. And you can symbolically represent these problems and put in all sorts of values for the symbols. Now, for this tweak, the top performing large language models like ChatGPT-01 Mini, they barely dropped their performance at all. There was a slight spread in the variance, like some choices of the symbols would be a little worse, some choices of the symbols would be a little bit better, but the average performance was about the same. However, a bunch of the open models that are, are lower performing than the top ones, actually, even for this tweak, <laughs> they kind of got a little bit decimated. So that raises questions of data contamination or overfitting, or at least a, a need to search for alternate explanations as to what's going on. Tweak number two. What if we made the problems harder, not by demanding a higher level of mathematical reasoning, we're not gonna suddenly slip in calculus level reasoning here. What if we take the exact same reasoning but just add more clauses at the same level? Let's make the problems longer. Let's go back to that hotel room phone example. It has that after 10 minutes, the price drops to 50 cents per minute. I can add a clause that's basically the same. After 25 minutes from the start of the call, the price drops even more to 30 cents per minute. It's the same reasoning as the prior sentence. It's just added an extra clause. I, I can add another one. If your total bill is more than $10, you get a 25% discount. Slightly different structure than before, but a very similar reasoning level. So you can go through the database and, and have these additional clauses that you can add to every one of the problems. So how did they do? This is O1 Mini, so one of the top performing large language models. The GSM symbolic is the main one that we're talking about. M1 here means that you subtract a clause. P1 is plus one, so you add an extra clause, and P2 you've added two clauses. And what you can see is that it starts at about this 95%, but as you add the clauses of increasing difficulty, you get this drop down to 89%. And the drop from 95 to 89 is interesting, but what I think is even more interesting is the spread. You get this wide variance when you add in two different additional clauses. Sometimes it performs quite poorly and sometimes it, it performs really well. If you go to something like Gemma 2, which is, is an open model, which is really nice, people can play with it. It doesn't do as well as ChatGPT. It gets more about 80%. But look how much it gets decimated as you add in these problems. It, it's dropping down now to 40% with a wide distribution. It's a real big drop as you add the difficulty levels. Okay, tweak three, and this is why I really wanted to make this video. What the researchers did here 
was they took the problems and they added irrelevant clauses. Extra clauses that shouldn't change anything, that can just be entirely ignored. But the question is whether the AI can detect that these clauses are supposed to be ignored. Like, for example, Oliver picks 44 Kiwis on a Friday, then he picks 58 Kiwis on a Saturday, and on Sunday he picks double the number of Kiwis he did on Friday. How many Kiwis does Oliver have? That's an original problem. I can add in something irrelevant, like five of them were a bit smaller than average. That doesn't change the answer at all. You can entirely ignore this. We're only asked how many Kiwis Oliver has, not what their size are. But it takes a bit of reasoning to determine that this extra clause can be ignored. And this was the tweak that really hurt the large language models. I don't even have to go down the list of the lower performing ones. Something like ChatGPT 4.0 Mini, which did 95% in the original data set. This is a drop down to a crazy 66% you start adding in these irrelevant statements. The way the paper phrases this is that large language models likely perform a form of probabilistic pattern matching and searching to find the closest seen data during training without proper understanding of the concepts. That is, it's not formal reasoning. Things that are, are, are quote unquote irrelevant are easy to discard with a bit of reasoning, but if you're probabilistically pattern matching, then you might not discard them. Particularly given that the training data, when you look at the kind of problems you're going to see all around the internet, most of the time teachers don't add in pointless irrelevant statements. It's just sort of, why are you going to put them in there? Maybe we should do more of that as teachers because that's a human skill to, to reason away these irrelevant statements. But most of the time that, that teachers ask such problems, they're not going to contain those statements. And so in the training data, you're going to have this bias that if some clause is included, it's probably relevant, and those numbers are gonna be relevant for the computation. And, and this is ultimately why I think that a lot of these large language models try to use these irrelevant statements even when they shouldn't. Personally, one thing I'm really curious about this paper that's unanswered is like, how do humans do with these tweaked problems? I mean, I've been kind of suggesting that I think that humans can easily reason that these irrelevant clauses are not supposed to be involved, but that's not always the case. I mean, there's a very famous example in the education research which asks a, a, a completely ridiculous question to grade eight students. The question is, if you have 125 sheep, and you have five dogs, how old is the shepherd? It's a nonsensical question. The, the question can't be answered with the data that's being provided. And there's this great video, I'll link it below, where these grade eight students are just trying to answer the problem. They're doing 125 divided by five and 125 minus five. And they explain their reasoning as to why they're doing this. They're sort of on autopilot trying to, to make this question that makes no sense and do mathematical computations to it. And probably humans are gonna make the same flaw that large language models do, which is that most times a teacher gives you a problem, all of the clauses and the word problem are relevant. And so you're sort of biased to think that because the teacher gave it to me, there must be an answer that can be provided on the information. However, one of the authors of this paper guesses that humans are likely to be better at this kind of mathematical reasoning, detecting these irrelevant statements and discarding than the large language models seem to be today. Ultimately, today is the worst that the AI is ever gonna be. It's only gonna get better. And this whole conversation about mathematical reasoning, perhaps is a little bit pedantic. What, what ultimately matters is what they can do and, and how effective they are at it. But research like this paper is, is good at sort of indicating what type of things it's doing well and where are places where it can stumble. And that's just good to keep in the back of your mind. As always, when I discuss a paper, I would encourage you to go down in the description to read the paper yourself. That's where all of the stats that are described in this video are coming from. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll do some more math in the next video.